Aloha and welcome to Gentle Flow special Thanksgiving. For today's practice, you will only need a chair from your house, so just grab any chair. If you have uh, blankets, you can grab them or towels. And then, of course, if you have blocks, you can have them nearby. You don't need anything for the practice, just a chair would be nice to begin. And just a few words before we start. So today it is Thanksgiving. I was born and I grew up in Lebanon, which there's, there was no Thanksgiving at the time where I grew up at all. Now maybe people are starting to, uh, to celebrate it, you know, more like a, a thing for Black Friday and all of this stuff, right? But at the time, it was, it was, very, uh, it was very much this thing that I would see in, in books, right? And on TV, and I'd be like, oh my God, America, that is so cool, that is so beautiful, right? I want to live there, it's so nice, it's all about love, it's all about sharing, and then, and, and then I moved here, right? <laughs> and, and there was lots of other dreams also about America, right? Like America, America, America. And then I moved here, and I started to see that so many things that drew me out of Lebanon, right, were existing here. You know what I mean? Like, it's not really that America is better than any other place or, 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 or worse, right? It's just like it's the human nature. So I started to learn a little bit more about Thanksgiving and what it really, really means. So I'd like to see both sides because there's something really nice about the American reframing of it where it's like great we eat turkey and we share and we're thankful there's something very heartfelt and all of that and it's beautiful and it's noble you don't have to throw it out right and many of you grew up with this and it's something very uh, emotional right there's so much memories around this the family the food the mother the grandmother right there's all of that which is so beautiful but I think we can add to this an element of freely reflecting uh, on and honoring the real protectors of the land, the real owners. If you, like, I don't really think anyone owns anything on the planet, but the real ones who were here before us, right? And um, there is something also in the world today with with everything that's happening in the states and and in many other places as well of this colonization right even if it's not called that way if it's not european it's 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 it has other shapes right now but it's really all about just abusing and taking the lands of other people i see it in my country right and with israel and the palestinians and all of that and this is not okay right this is not okay at all so i think it's a good it's a good way to i hope from now on because the world is waking up, everything is on social media, no one can lie anymore about this stuff, right? That eventually we will start to change a little bit the narrative and add to the love and sharing and thanking and all of that, adding really the real side of history, right? And, uh, and really honoring the, the, the Native American heritage and the Hawaiian heritage, which is native, the Alaskan uh, uh, heritage that is native. So that's a little bit my view of it, right? And um, and there's a book. There's a book called "This Land Is Their Land." Uh, it's a really, really good book. I just started reading it, so I can't say a lot about it. Plus, we want to start yoga. Uh, but uh, if, if you want to read a little bit more about it, it's really nicely written. He's, he's a big professor. Uh, this land is their land, right? So uh, let's get started, okay? Bring the chair. Oh, this is Shakti, by the way, the little kitty cat who loves... Uh, the restorative portions of class. So this practice is, uh, there's a little bit of restorative yoga, so it's going to be really calm and nice, and a portion in the middle, we're going to be moving uh, a little bit, and there's lots of breath work inside of it. So to begin, if you have blocks, grab them. If you don't have blocks, don't worry at all. You don't need anything. As I said, just grab a chair so that you can elevate your feet up on the chair. And then go ahead and lie down onto your back, please. Bend your knees and put your feet down on the floor. And just to begin, you can take a moment just to rest yourself, rearrange your shoulders. Lift your hips up, shake them from side to side, and then take them down onto the floor. And then lift your feet and put your feet up on the chair. Let your shins, I'm sorry, let your calves be supported by the chair. 
And then take a moment here just to lounge. You can open your arms towards the sides, palms facing upwards. You can move your head from side to side. Feel free to close your eyes just to begin to land onto your mat, into your body, into your breath. And then if you have logs, you can bring your feet to the edge of the chair and then lift your hips up and then slide one or two blocks underneath your sacrum. So again, you can use books here if you'd like, although they're slippery a little bit. Some people use the protein shake bottles, which are incredible props, by the way. <laughs> they're sturdy, they're the perfect height. So you can really get creative and place something underneath your, uh, your sacrum. So your sacrum is really this flat bone that is right at the top, top, top of your butt crack, right? So you want this piece of bone to be on the blocks, if you have blocks, and then really extend your legs. So you can put one block, you can put two blocks on the lowest setting, you can put two blocks on the highest setting. For all the Katona people, if you have three or more blocks, you know exactly what to do. I'm not gonna demonstrate it. And then open your arms towards the sides, open your palms towards the ceiling, Yes, uh, Jeff, you can, if, if you'd like to elevate your pelvis, you can elevate it onto a pillow also. It feels really nice to just have the pelvis a little bit elevated and then have your lower back hanging off of the block. So your lower back is free. Nice, very good. And then start to organize your feet. So bring your uh, middle toes to be parallel together. Flex your feet a little bit as if you're stepping on the wall in front of you. Nice. And then start to close your eyes. Open your ears. And begin to listen to all the sounds around you in the room. Other than my voice, what are you hearing? Just start to bring your awareness to each of these sounds. Start to move your awareness from one sound to the next. And then start to bring your awareness closer and closer to your physical body, maybe starting to feel the very subtle sound of your breath. This beautiful inhale and satisfying exhale that is always happening ever since the moment you were born, your first inhale. And it will stay with you until the moment you leave with your last exhale. So there's something very intimate with the breath is with us all the time. And at the same time, you cannot remember it and you cannot project it. So you have to have it in the present moment. It is the only thing that exists. It is the only thing that is true. And then it becomes a memory immediately. That's the nature of the present moment. It's very, it's eternal, but it's very elusive at the same time, right? Present becomes memories immediately. But then you can start to use your memories to push you forward towards your destination, your potential, your future. So many of us allow the memory to take over our lives, to taint every decision that we take, and really in the body, the memories live in the back of the body. You can think of the back of your body like your shell, like a carapace, like the shell of a turtle full of experience, right? All of these years. So your back is like this. It becomes stronger with every year of your life. So really, if you don't wanna end up a hunchback, like all of these older people that we see, you can start to put yourself in back bends like this. It doesn't have to be crazy, but these are really very therapeutic postures to elongate the front of the body. Right away, you can feel maybe that your breath has started to shift a little bit. The mental landscape is becoming to clear up. And I'm not asking you to do all of these things, right? They just happen naturally because the scaffolding underneath you, the conditions have been set for this to happen. 
And now you can go ahead and take your hands behind your head. Grab hold of your opposite elbows, please. So take your right palm on your left elbow, left palm on your right elbow, make a frame and put the frame over your head. Let your elbows fall behind you. Let the tip of your nose be the center of this beautiful frame. And then start to take your awareness down to your legs. Imagine your legs being your roots, your connection to the planet. And now start to bring your awareness to your pelvis. If it's elevated, it's great. If it's not elevated, it's great as well. Just notice your pelvis. Where is it in space? The pelvis being really the roots of the roots, right? It is really where your legs start, right? And it is really where your upper body sprouts from. So you can start to bring your awareness to your torso with your lungs, your heart, your liver, your thyroid gland being right at the bottom, the lowest point here, your parathyroid. And this is really like the branches of your tree. And then finally, your head, your face, your mind, your eyes, your ears, your cheek, your mouth, your teeth, your tongue, all of these beautiful senses that you have, the beautiful intellect that you have. It's like the fruits of your tree, the flowers, the blossoms, really resting down on the floor behind you, framed by your arms, framed by your capacity, which is all in your arms. Nice. And now for the last few seconds, you can give your arms another variation, maybe interlace your fingers. So bring all of your um, uh, fingers together, interlace them like a racket, and then lift your head and put your hands behind your head as if you're chilling on the beach, right? The cliche, uh, <laughs> the cliche sitting on the beach. I don't, don't know how comfortable it is to really sit like this for hours under the beach, but you know what I mean. The elbows are open towards the sides, like extensions of your ears. And your face is really resting on your palms. In Chinese theory, which uh, we use a lot in the practice that I, that I practice and teach, the Katona practice, um, in the Chinese theory, really the arms are extensions of your heart, how you handle yourself, how you handle the world. You cook with them, you work with them, you massage, you touch, you caress. And your head is really how you have a big vision for yourself. This is where the control room is, right? Where everything is planned, strategized, remember, remembered, dreamed. So now you're really allowing your capacity, which is in your hand, to really hold your vision so that the vision can start to find an avenue, right, to happen in the world, not just to stay up there in the third floor next to the sky with the stars, to really start to take this vision and start to make it a reality. If you like the word manifest, you can think of that word. I think it's been a little bit overused, but it's fine. <laughs> And then whenever you're ready, you can separate your hands, bring them by your side. If you have a support underneath you, you will bring your feet on the front edge of the chair, just like you came on it. Lift your hips up, take the blocks or the pillows out, stick your butt out, and then descend yourself down, 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 down onto the floor. You can bring the soles of your feet together and open your knees wide in Baddha Konasana, bound angle pose, like a butterfly. And then you can let your, uh, your pinky toe side edges of the feet rest on the seat of the chair. Just for a few seconds here of integration, especially if you had your pelvis elevated, you can shimmy your knees from side to side. And then take a moment here to find your liver underneath the right hand. So the liver is on the right side of your chest. And your heart, the organ of the heart, the real one, right? On the left side of your chest. 
And then start to feel this place that is right in the middle between the liver and the heart. This is what we call, many people say it's the heart center, right? In the Indian narrative, this is the heart chakra. In the Katona theory, we call this the third hand, right? You have a right hand, a left hand, and then you have this third invisible hand in the center. It is like your steering wheel, how you drive yourself in the world, how you mediate between the polarity of the world on the right side and the feelings on the left side, the polarity of the liver being the general of all of your organs, and the heart, the organ of the heart being the matriarch, the queen, the good queen, right, on the left side. And then there's you in the middle trying to make sense of this polarity among so many other polarities as well. And then whenever you're ready, you can bring your knees towards your chest, give yourself a nice hug. You can massage your kidneys, your adrenals by moving left to right, right to left. Oh, so good. It's beautiful. And then roll to your left side. So roll to the side of your heart and take a moment here on your left, allowing the liver to be on top of the heart, protecting it like the real, um, like the real role of a general, right? The liver on the right, on the, uh, on top of the heart, the heart being at the bottom, nice and protected. This uh, notion of general has been abused so much, right? <laughs> In my country, we have a general that's at the presidency, and he's he's a he kills the people instead of protecting them. And then, when you're ready, push your right hand down to lift yourself up. And I really think all of these political things are very yogic right in a way there's so many people who avoid talking about yoga uh, talking about politics or something in yoga but i think the uh doing yoga is a very political act it's really saying no right to all of the things that we've been taught to the system to how we need to follow right all of these rules and all of these stuff like sheeps and being like wait no I am the one who mediates all of these things. I am in the center of my world, of my experience. So there's something very uh, subversive, right? There's something very revolutionary in just the act of doing what we're, what we're doing here. And it doesn't have to be crazy, uh, uh, crazy loud, right? It can be very silent, just like being on a chair, just like we did now. And then take the chair to the side. We'll be using it maybe in a little bit. And make your way onto your mat once again. And then go ahead and sit in a comfortable seat. So there's a few options here. You can roll a blanket or a pillow, sit down on it, and sit cross-legged. I'd like you to elevate your pelvis a little bit on, on something. So it feels really nice to grab something from your house and really elevate your pelvis. You can bring yourself onto your knees, bring your big toes together, and go ahead and sit on top of your heels like this. Right? This is a great way. I don't want you to sit on your kidneys, right? I want you to lift your kidneys, take them back a little bit so that you find your sitting bones and you have this nice curve in your spine. If you have a block, you can bring a block and place it behind you. And then you can bring yourself onto hands and knees, squeeze the block between your ankles, and then go ahead and sit on top of the block. Right, so find a seat, find a variation of a seat that's comfortable for you, right? And no matter which seat you are in, lift your butt up, take your butt bones back, back, back behind you, and then descend yourself down so that the center of your pelvis, the perineum, is plugged underneath you and the support that is under you. Nice. Beautiful. And then put yourself right in the middle here. Shake your shoulders, move your head from side to side. And lift your arms over your head. 
triangulate yourself. So create a nice equilateral triangle here so that the distance between your right hand, your heart, your heart, your left hand, left hand, right hand is the same. You have 60 degrees angle everywhere. So nice. Look at your right hand. Imagine your right hand being an extension of your liver, right? So your liver goes out into the world. So make it very strong, like a good general, right? Now, every time I say general, I'm going to think about the other one. I shouldn't have said that. But make a nice fist with the right hand, okay? So that it's nice and punchy. It brings testosterone into the system for all of us. We all need it, whether you're a woman, a man, or somewhere in between. And then take your left hand and make a cup with the left hand. The left hand really being the extension of the heart, right? The extension of the feeling. So you want to make it a little bit more receptive, calling for the estrogen that we all need uh, in our lives again, right? So once you have these two mudras here, here with your hands, take your shoulders back and down. Nice. Put yourself right in the center of your axis. Turn on your imagination, go up in the sky, bring a big golden thread, a beautiful golden thread from the sky. Take it down, down, down towards the crown of your head. Imagine this thread being the story of the universe, right? The narrative of the universe, the story of creation. So bring it down towards this planet, put it inside of your head from the crown, start to turn it into a personal thread here, a personal narrative. This golden thread goes down, it penetrates the roof of your mouth, down towards the floor of your heart. This golden thread goes down, down, down to the center of your pelvis, the perineum, it leaves you and it connects you to the earth underneath you. Now you're on this beautiful axis that connects you to the heaven above, to the earth below, to anything over you, bigger than you, more divine, and to all of the primal nature of who we are down on this planet. And then keep yourself here in the middle, and now we're going to start to pump the breath out, out, out in Kapalabhati. If you're familiar with it, great. If you're not familiar with it, you can uh, inhale and exhale uh, quickly if you'd like. <laughs> like the breath of fire, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. So it's, it's really, it's a fast breath. Or you can uh, stick your tongue out and start to do the puppy breath. <laughs> so it's an exhale, exhale, exhale. Then close your mouth. <laughs> and continue doing the same sound with your nostril. If all of this is too much or very uncomfortable for you, just inhale and exhale normally, but keep your arms over your head. Now let your breath come back to normal. If you were testing all of these, put yourself right in the middle, connect yourself to something bigger than you and something below you, and then put yourself right on this axis. Take a nice long inhale and a nice long exhale. Take a short, comfortable inhale. And start to pump your breath out, out, out. Find a nice rhythm here and keep pumping your breath out, 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 or in, out, in, out, in, out. Find your rhythm here. Find your expression. Find your center right in the middle. And then take all of your awareness down to your legs, to your knees, to your pelvis, to your kidneys, your digestive systems, reproductive organs, all of these parts of you that are really, really primal, right? So really now you can start to imagine that your body is your house. This is your basement. This is your first floor. This is where all of your plumbing are. So send your next few breaths down there, <laughs> allowing anything that is old, anything moldy, right? All of the mushrooms, all of the mold that is down in the basement, open up the windows, let them go out. <laughs> Bring some new air in your basement, open up all of these pathways down there, and now start to lift your awareness up to your torso, to your second floor. This is your living quarter. This is where you live. This is where you cook. This is where you love others and you love yourself. So continue pumping your breath out, 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 opening up the windows of your lungs, opening up the windows of your kitchen so that there's no smell of cooking inside of you. There's no smell of food that is not being digested well. Keep pumping the breath out, out, out. We're almost there. Now lift your awareness up, up, up to your head, to your face, to your crown, to your mind, to your brain, and keep pumping your breath out, out, out. You are landing in your penthouse. That's the third floor of your house. That is the cupola up, up, up where you see everything, where you have your bedroom, you have your atelier, you have your attic, you have your observatory. You can see the stars from up there with your pineal gland. So continue pumping the breath out, out, out. Skull shining breath, kapalabhati. Clean anything that is lingering up there. Any belief that doesn't serve you anymore. Anything that's really, really outdated 
activated. Out, out, out. And then bring yourself to the middle. Take a big inhale. Exhale, hands down. Beautiful. Every time you inhale, you can imagine fire rising behind your back. And every time you exhale, you can image water descending in front of you. Very simple. You can wrap yourself with the element of fire, the heat of the inhale raising, rising behind your back. And then when you exhale, you can let go and watch the water fall in front of you like the rain falling from the sky, like the grace. And then keep putting yourself into this orbit right in the center of the circuit of fire effort behind you, inhale. And water, grace, exhale in front of you. And now when you're ready, open your eyes, interlace your fingers to the webbing. So create this third hand, right? So this is really in the theory that we practice this, uh, the third hand here, it's really an outer manifestation of the heart center, right? So we talked about having this place here that is really where your immunity is, where your compassion is, the energetic heart center. It's in all the spiritual traditions, right? The sacred heart with Jesus, all of that. So in the body, when you want to work with it on the mat, you interlace your fingers, you bring the right and the left together. So you're creating something new, right? Just like when, when you clap, you're creating something new that didn't exist before. So now you're creating your third hand and turn your palms down towards the floor, right? Very simple here. Make a circle over your left knee and then bring it to your pubis and then make a circle over your right knee so that you're starting to make like an infinity loop here down there. You can look at it here to begin, right? And you can go really slow. This is not really designed to go fast. The only thing is that you don't want to hold your breath, <laughs> right? It is, uh, there's something in this one. Uh, I, I'm the first one, right? I forget to breathe sometime in, in it because I'm like, oh my God, is the, is the infinity loop perfect? Am I going in the right direction? Am I, am I, Am I going backward? And really, it doesn't matter, right? It's an infinity loop. Like, even if you go in the other way, it's totally fine. So now start to move here, playing with your first floor, right? This is really your basement. This is your... Uh, root system. This is what connects you to this planet. This is very primal, right? This is where food, sex, money, and water is. This is what you hide under the table. This is many cultures. We hide all of this. Like we don't talk about all of these things. So now you can continue moving here in this big infinity loop and start to shed the light on all of that. You can imagine that you have like a little flashlight underneath your palms, right? And you're starting to shed the light on this part of you, which is not only a part of you, it is part of the collective. Some conscious of everyone, right? We're living all of this. We think that this person is racist, this president is racist, but it's actually inside of all of us in a certain extent. The goal is like, am I going to be honest enough to acknowledge it? Because when I start to acknowledge it, then I can start to change it. It's like people who are homophobes and don't say that they're homophobes. They're like, no, I'm not, but they are. And then when they start to say that they are, they end up knowing that they are Gay, right? So that's the thing. Like, are you gonna be? Are you gonna be honest with everything, right? That's that's one of the games of yoga for me, right? It's really pure, pure honesty. So now that you get the gist of this one down there, you can go maybe a little bit faster, making nice infinity loop, so nice, beautiful. And now start to bring your awareness a little bit to your inner organs, right? To your uh, to your kidneys, your adrenals, your liver, your intestines, your colon, right? So now you're starting to massage all of this. And now you're going to start to take this infinity loop and make it a little bit higher. So now the palms are facing in front of you, right? And your hands are right in front of your navel. Now your hands will move up right in front of your sternum. Nice. Your elbows are moving up and down. Nice. Think of yourself really giving your inner organs a big massage here. Very nice. Kate, that looks wonderful. Yes, Yara. So nice. Let your palm look right in front of you here. Beautiful. Jeff, this was so good. So make the loop even bigger. Imagine you have a pencil on each elbow and you're trying to make a circle on the right and a circle on the left. Nice. Now start to lift this a little bit higher. You're moving up to your second floor and now you're moving up and up right in front of your face and now you're moving up a little bit even higher you're moving up to your penthouse right so now the palms are facing up towards the sky that's a little bit more challenging maybe so you can look at it and continue moving in this big 
uh, infinity loop over your head. The palms are facing up, so nice, beautiful. And now it's as if you're pulling yourself out of your depth. You're moving out of the mud of the kidneys, out of the mud of your ancestors, out of that puddle of the past that is underneath you in your pelvis with all of the subconscious stuff, all of these murky waters, and you're lifting up towards the sky. So continue extending your arms more than ever. Try to straighten your arms up. So good, beautiful. And now that you've seen the stars, the sky, everything that's so effervescent up there, start to take it back down. So now very methodical. It comes in front of your face, in front of your throat. Nice, beautiful. Find this nice rhythm. This is a complete body workout, by the way. And if you're trying to lose weight, this is incredible. You just do this for five minutes. It is really magical. You see all the people doing it in Asia, in the, um, in the parks, right? All of the women who want to I don't know why they say woman, but I'm sure men also want to lose weight, but that's the cliche, right? So continue moving here, right and left, bringing yourself back down, 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 nice. And now you land down where you started, right? Now the palms are facing the earth, nice. You're back in this infinity loop down there. It's a great reminder that we're all living in cycles. You have the cycles of nature. You have the cycles of the seasons. We have the cycles of life. Nothing is linear. Everything is in a big, big circle. So now you can continue moving here down there, maybe remembering the ancestors, remembering the ones who came before us, the one who made all of this life that we have possible so that we don't have to hunt. We don't have to be scared of being killed by animals so that some of us also can hold the hand of whoever they want on the street because some people fought before us, right? So there's all of these beautiful, or just having a different color, right? All of these, these people who fought for years and years and years. So really giving a little bit of thought, right? A little bit of thinking, a little bit of heart maybe to all of the ones who came before us, really buried down underneath the ground. So you can really work here with the earth underneath you. Nice, beautiful. And now you can start to take this up to your second floor. This is really the floor of your compassion, right? This is where you can think of the Thanksgiving, how they teach it, right, to the kids, which is very cute because they think that kids cannot take the truth. And it's actually not true. Kids, if you tell them that they killed indigenous people, they'd be like, oh, why? You know, and then they, it's fine. They'll be fine with it. So anyway, this is really the floor of your compassion. This is where you share meals with others. This is really giving thanks, giving love, nice, in front of your heart, your heart looking at your third hand, your third hand representing your heart. And now you can lift it up and up and up to your third floor. Nice, beautiful. Once you're up there, really get yourself out of yourself, out of your depth, reach for the stars, reach for the sky. And now it's really your narrative. It is what do you do with all of these stories of like, yes, there is abuse. Yes, there is injustice. Yes, there is white supremacy, colonialism, all of these stuff, racism. And then yes, there is beautiful traditions at the same time. There is beautiful American tradition, right? There is all of these. So then when you move up there, up, up, up here, it's none of anyone's business. It is really how you frame this thing, right? Where do you put yourself in this narrative, in this polarity between the, uh, the history uh, of the people and the history of the nation? And then bring yourself back down one last time. The hands are pointing in front of you, coming down all of your chakras all of your major psychic centers, all of your floors. Nice, beautiful. Making sure you have a nice opening in your second floor so that you, you can have space for the heart, space for the lungs, so nice. And then take it down towards the earth. <sighs> I'm sweating, by the way, <laughs> right? <laughs> and make a big infinity loop one last time. Taking a moment to put all of that insight from the mind from the great mind up there in the sky and the stars and bringing it down to this dimension, to the earth so that we can make all of these visions a reality and not keep them up there. And then bring yourself to the middle. Inhale, take both arms up towards the sky. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Hook your thumbs over your head. Take three sips of air through your mouth. Take another sip, fill your upper lungs completely squeeze your perineum 
squeeze your belly, take another little sniff, put yourself under pressure, tuck your chin towards your chest a little bit, soothe yourself here. Maybe you swallow, maybe you inhale more. What do you tell yourself when you're under pressure? Keep inhaling maybe. And then take a moment to imagine that the breath will leave you through the crown of your head. And then whenever you're ready, exhale, shoot the breath out, take your hands down, palms up, eyes closed. Take a moment to notice what you need today. Maybe creating a vision for yourself. And then when you're ready, you can bring your palms together in the center of your chest and Anjali Mudra, great gesture of gratitude towards ourselves, towards our past, our history, towards our bodies and the great minds that we have, our biggest tool, our biggest asset, our biggest weapon as well, that no one can take away from us. Even if you are in a prison, even if you are abused, what is inside of your mind is yours. And that is super powerful. And then whenever you're ready, you can bow your head towards your hands, open your eyes, open your mouth and exhale. <sighs> Inhale, lift your prayer up, 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 up towards the sky. Follow it with your eyes. Try not to blink. Back bend a little bit. And then exhale, separate your hands and land on your mat. That was so nice, you guys. Bring yourself onto your hands and your knees. And then let's... Uh, Let's fold over ourselves. So if you have a blanket or a towel, it's really nice to place it behind you so you can roll it or a pillow, right? And go ahead and step on top of it, right? So just elevate your heels here a little bit. If you have blocks, you can grab the blocks. Again, you don't need any props. But if you have something to elevate your heels, it would be, uh, it would be really nice. Nice. And then very simple here, make two fists with your hands. So bring two fists very, very close together. Bend your knees so much and then go down and put your fists right in between your arches down on the floor. Yes, yes, yes. So good. And then walk your feet closer and closer together. So nice. So that everything is very tight. The feet and the fists are super tight. And then separate your hands. Grab hold of your opposite elbows. Keep your knees bent and drop your head down. Keep your eyes open and start to shake your head from side to side. Your head is inside of the frame once again. You can start to sway your weight forward and backward, bringing your weight to the heels, digging your heels down on the support, on the blanket. And then bring your weight forward, forward, forward on the balls of your feet, on your toes. Keep moving here between the balls of the feet, maybe lifting the heels a little bit, coming onto the precipice of yourself, the future, the potential, the unknown. And then dig your heels down, take your butt back, dig your heels in the blanket so that you can move towards your memories, towards your past, the familiar, it feels safer. And now continue moving here between forward on the tippy toes and backwards on the heels so that you're starting to play the game of time, this game of the present moment moment being right, uh, becoming memory immediately. You can think of the present moment like the arch of your foot right in the middle. And every time that you're moving front and back, you're passing through the arch of the foot. So now you can start to make the movement a little bit more subtle so that you're moving forward and back in a more subtle way. Nice, beautiful. You can shake your head from side to side. Feel free to remove your hand, remove your arms, and maybe cup your heels from the back. So take your hands behind your heels and try to bring your knees inside of your armpits or very close to your armpits. Yes, so good, beautiful. And then relax your head down and continue swaying forward and back. But this time, you don't want anyone to know. So now your movement is so subtle that when you're moving forward on the balls of the feet and backwards towards your heels, it's so subtle that it's happening only inside of the body, inside of the mind, so that no one can seize this movement, but you know that it's happening, so that it's giving you the center of your arch, the present moment, that is very dynamic. So it's so dynamic, it's so moving so fast 
that it's static. It feels static for the outer eye. And then whenever you're ready, you can lift your hands up. You can lift your head up and then extend your arms forwards and forwards and forwards. So nice. Imagine yourself on a big clock on the floor, Iona. So good. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're, you're in the chair pose. We're not going to do it today, but very good. <laughs> Beautiful. You can do it if you'd like. Extend your fingertips forward, forward, as if you're coming into a dog, but you're not there quite already. Right. Beautiful. So, Jeff, take your butt back a little bit more. Keep digging your heels down. Nice, nice. You're, you're still in a forward fold. Yes. Beautiful. Your fingers are moving forward. Put yourself on a clock here. 12 o'clock is right in front of you. So extend your fingertips towards 12 o'clock right in front and then start to walk your hands towards 10 o'clock so outside of the mat on the left side notice that the right hip wants to come with you plug your right hip back so now the fingertips are moving to the left nice lift your vision look forward so good beautiful look towards 10 o'clock beautiful plug your right heel down nice and then start to walk your hands towards the center Beautiful. Nice. Rick, bring your pelvis over your heel. So you're still in the forward fold. Yes, yes, yes. And just the arms are moving to the sides. Now let your fingers move towards two o'clock on the right side. Nice. The fingers are outside of your mat on the right. And then plug your left heel down more than ever. Start to extend your vision towards the right side, towards two o'clock on the right. And then send your left hip back right next to the left. Beautiful. Inhale, bring yourself back towards the center. So good. And then exhale, take your knees down towards the floor. Nice. Remove the blanket if you don't need it, or you can, you can keep it for downward facing dog. You can have your heels on the blanket if you want. And then bring yourself into a plank. It's very simple here. Just bring yourself into a high plank. If you want to put your knees on the floor, you can, right? But really put your shoulders over your wrists, right? So you really want a 90 degree behind your wrists here. So once you have this, you can either keep your knees on the floor like this, or you can poop, lift your knees up and put yourself into a really nice long high plank. That's it. Once you're in a high plank, beautiful. Look in front of you, bend your knees, lift your hips up and back and push your pelvis up towards the sky. Keep your knees bent here. You can have the blanket behind your heels if you want, or you can keep your heels dropping towards the floor. They don't have to touch the floor. They should not actually in this version touch the floor at all, right? So look at your feet here. Is there any wrinkles on your feet, right? So if you have wrinkles on your uh, ankles, lift your heels a little bit higher. If you have wrinkles around your toes, drop your heels a little bit lower. So start to take the information of the, of the wrinkles, right, of all of these folds to organize your feet here. So good. Then lift your vision, look at your hands, make your middle fingers parallel together. Beautiful. Jeff, push the floor away from you, bend your knees, lift your butt up, put yourself in a nice triangle, equilateral, nice. Bend your knees a little bit in this dog. I know, lift your butt up a little bit more. So nice, so beautiful. Nice, 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 Michael. Inhale, bring yourself forward, drop your hips down. You're an upward facing dog. You can keep your toes tucked for this one. Lift your knees off the ground if you can. If not, you can kiss your knees to the floor. Same thing. And then whenever you're ready, lift your hips up and back. Come back into a dog. Nice. Inhale, look forward. Ripple yourself forward. Drop your hips down. Open your lungs. Bring your lungs through your arms. Look forward. Get a nice vision. Exhale, lift your hips up and back. Go back into a dog. So nice, beautiful. Two more times. Inhale, you ripple forward. You open your vision. You open your lungs. Exhale, you take yourself back into your shell, back into your carapace, back into your dog. Beautiful. Inhale, bring yourself forward. Go out. See what's out there for you. Exhale, go back into your shell, your reflection, your home, your dog. So good, beautiful. Look forward. Lunge your right foot in between your hands. Right foot right in between your hands. Nice. So now the left foot and the right foot are on a tight rope. They're on one line, right? And then drop your left knee down towards the floor. Keep your left toes tucked so you have a nice stability here behind you. Yes, beautiful. 
put your uh, right knee inside of your right armpit. So you have a nice fit here, right knee, right armpit. Yeah, Sydney, you remember these, right? Working with, yeah, so good, working with the kidneys here. Every time you do that, you're really flushing the right kidney, right? So give it a nice stir here towards the right, towards the left. So many people would go to the bathroom after this one if you flush too much. So be careful what you do and how much you do stuff, right? And then once you're in it here, lift yourself up, keep your back toes stuck so you have a nice, uh, the nice ground behind you. You're a little bit on a tightrope by design. And then lift yourself up, lift your arms over your head, hook your thumbs together, pull your, palm, uh, your thumbs apart, and then start to back bend. Pubis, navel, sternum, forward, up and back, forward, up and back, forward, up and back. Look up at your fingertips. Exhale, separate your hands, place them on the floor on either side of the right foot and then step your right foot next to the left, your back and your dog, so nice. Reorganize your dog, bend your knees a little bit, lift your butt up so much, very good, beautiful. Lift your vision a little bit, look towards your hands. Inhale, ripple forward, upward facing dog, drop your hips down, open your vision, look in front of you. Exhale, downward facing dog, so nice. Look forward, inhale, lunge your left foot forward, take your right knee down and uh, keep your right toe stuck for this one. Keep your right toe stuck. Put your left knee inside of your left armpit. Give it a nice little stir here on the left. Very nice. Other direction as well. Put yourself on this nice little tightrope and then inhale, lift yourself up, lift your arms over your head, hook your thumbs the opposite way, so the weird way, and then extend your crown over your head, open up the other eight fingers, and then push everything forward, and then everything forward up, and then everything forward, up and back, forward, up and back, forward, up and back. Keep inhaling and exhaling, keep tucking your back toes, keep sending your front knee forward, and keep lifting your vision over your head and a little bit towards the back. Exhale, separate your hands, bring them on either side of the left foot, and then step your left foot back, downward facing dog. Beautiful people, inhale, look forward, ripple forward, upward facing dog, moving from joint spaces, minimal effort in the muscles, exhale, downward facing dog, so good. Now. Bend your knees, look towards your hands, step your right foot forward, step your left foot forward, fold over yourself. This time your feet are closer together. And then you can bend your knees and fold a little bit deeper. You can take your hands behind your heels, you can cup your heels with your hands, and then you can rest your head down and take a moment for yourself here, completely closing the upper body on top of the lower body. Nice which allows you to free your vision, to shake your head from side to side. Nice. You can open your mouth and flutter your lips. Beautiful, so nice. Nice. And now whenever you're ready, open your eyes. Let's flow a little bit. Inhale, lift yourself up. These are the water salutations of Katona. Lift your arms over your head, catch a prayer and bring the prayer down towards your heart. Remember your vision, your intention. Inhale, lift your prayer up. Try to bring your elbows close together. When your arms are straight, separate them in a big V. Then bring your palms over your head in a prayer and bring it down towards your heart. Fold down with it, take it down towards the floor. Beautiful. Bend your knees, plant your hands down, lunge your right foot back, back, back. Keep your right knee tucked exactly like we did, your right toe stuck, lower your right knee down. Inhale, lift yourself up. You can hook your thumbs over your head, back, bend yourself, look up. Exhale, hands on either side of the front foot and step your left foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, ripple forward, upward facing dog, open your lungs. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lunge your right foot forward. Keep your left toe stuck. Take your left knee down, untuck the left toes. Inhale, lift yourself up. Hook, hook your opposite thumb up and back, up and back. Exhale, hands on either side of the right foot and then step your left foot forward, fold over yourself. Inhale, lift yourself up. Take the prayer up with you. Open it in a big V, look at the sky. Exhale, catch a prayer over your head, bring it to your heart and fold down with it. 
plant your hands down, lift your vision, look forward. Take your left foot back, left knee down, un uh, keep your toes tucked. Inhale, lift your arms up towards the sky. This time, grab hold of your opposite elbows. Put a frame over your head. Back bend it so much. Use your back foot to anchor you and then back bend even more. Exhale, separate your hands on either side of the right foot and step yourself back into a dog. Beautiful. Inhale, ripple forward. So nice, Melissa. Upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, lunge your left foot forward. Take your right knee down. Inhale, lift yourself up. Opposite, opposite elbows, the other one. Lift your vision up and back, up and back, up and back. Exhale, separate your hands. Place your hands on the floor. Lift your right knee and hop your right foot next to the left. Fold over yourself. Inhale, take the prayer up towards the sky. Open it in a big V. Exhale, bring the prayer back towards your heart. Fall down with it. So good. Lift your vision, look forward. It's the same sequence. Take your right leg back, right knee down. Inhale, lift your arms up. This time, parallel your arms together. Imagine yourself holding a ball of energy. Lift your vision up and back. Look at it. Exhale, hands on the floor. Beautiful. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, ripple forward like a wave, upward facing dog. Go in the ocean. Exhale, go back to the shore, downward facing dog. You're embodying a mountain. Look forward. Step your right foot forward. Take your left knee down. Untuck it. Uh, Keep your toes tucked. Inhale, lift your arms up, parallel your hands together. Hold that ball, lift your vision up and back, up and back, up and back. See how much of the room you're seeing. Exhale, hands on either side of the front foot and step your left foot forward to meet the right, fold over yourself. Inhale, take the prayer up towards the sky. Triangulate yourself, make a V like victory. Exhale, bring the prayer back to the heart, down towards the floor. Bend your knees, plant your hands, left leg back, left knee down. Inhale, lift yourself up. This time, interlace your fingers behind your head. Bring your elbows together. Take your head back, elbows up, head back, elbows up. Let this open your lungs, open your chest, open your vision. Exhale, hands on either side of the front foot. Beautiful. Right foot back, down dog. Inhale, ripple forward, upward facing dog like a wave. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last side, left foot forward, right knee down. Untuck the right toes or keep them tucked. Inhale, lift yourself up, interlace your fingers, the weird finger on top, and then lean your head back. Let your elbows come together. Push your pubis, your navel, your sternum forward, up and back, forward, up and back. Back bend yourself more than ever. Exhale, hands on either side of the front foot. Tuck your right toes. Lift your right knee and step your right foot next to the left. Fold over yourself. Inhale, lift it up towards the sky. Triangulate, make a big V. Exhale, bring the prayer back towards your heart. Close your eyes and take a moment here to integrate all of this movement. Let it percolate inside of your body. Let all of these avenues between your organs be clear so that your chi, your vital energy can move freely inside of you. So beautiful. And then whenever you're ready, you can look down at your hands, open your eyes, Imagine you have 10 candles here. Open your mouth and blow them. Exhale. <sighs> Inhale, lift it up towards the sky. Separate your hands. And then fold over yourself completely. Bend your knees. Plant your hands on the floor. Take your right leg back. Take your left leg back. Take your knees towards the floor. Separate them this time, like a, uh, like a child's pose. And bring your big toes to touch. Have all of the props uh, next to you here. So I really love to use lots of um, blankets or pillows between me and my uh, shins. So you can go ahead and bring one or two blankets. If you have a bolster, you can use it. And really use something here to elevate yourself even more. 
Nice. Beautiful. How are we feeling? How are we doing? Okay, awesome. Beautiful. <laughs> Very good. So once you have this, go ahead and sit on top of it. Nice. And notice if you're sitting on your, uh, on your kidneys, right? Or your butt bones or your sitting bones, which I don't really think they're made for sitting. They're made for to be behind you, right? So lift yourself up, lift your butt up, stick your butt back, back, back. Find the center of your pelvis. So find your perineum and plug it down on the support underneath you. And then start to walk yourself forward. But at the same time, don't lose that connection. So you don't want to bring your butt with you. Yeah, imagine me pulling your butt back, 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 back with a strap, right? So I'm really pulling all of the, or someone else, right? Pulling this, the, your pelvis back towards the back wall and then lift your vision and extend your, your uh, sternum, your vision, your fingertips towards the front wall, towards the front. Now, if you have something else, you can put it underneath your chest, right? So a pillow or a block maybe can go underneath the chest here. Nice. Beautiful, Sydney. So good. Ah, oh, beautiful. So we're coming into a, a, like a glorified child's pose, what we call frog pose in Katona, right? Which is different from the, the, the Iyengar frog, uh, a little bit different. And then you can rest your forehead down, either on a block, on a floor. And then extend your arms towards the side in a big V, like virtue. And then see if you can tent your fingertips so that your palms are lifted. And it's as if you have a mini cupcake underneath each hand, and you don't want the frosting to mess up your palms, right? So lift your palms up. Plug your fingertips down. Let this open up your, elbow, your uh, armpits, the housing of your lungs, so that the right lung and the left lung can be nice and available towards the sides. You can close your eyes completely here and imagine yourself putting all of that work that you've done, not only in the body, but lots of work in the mind. There's so much mind in yoga. It is really a practice that is designed to keep our minds active, moist, present, and it helps us not lose our minds. Mental health is uh, becoming a bigger and a bigger issue with every year that this world is going. And it's gonna be worse and worse, especially when we start to go to space, which is happening very soon, I think in our lifetimes <laughs> for some of us. So it's like, it's crazy, right? how many people are going crazy. So really allowing all of that beautiful work that you've done during this hour to start to integrate in every cell of your body. This is a great posture to just wait. You can think of everything we did as if you are preparing a meal, a recipe, a turkey, a tofurkey, <laughs> um, marshmallow thing with sweet potatoes. I don't know how it's called, but you know. And now you're putting it in the oven, right? Like now all you have to do is wait. And if you keep on opening the door of the oven every few seconds, you will ruin the dish, right? So can you give yourself just a few minutes here with you and your breath? A great way here is to start to circulate the breath inside of the body. You can inhale from your perineum, from your pelvis, up towards your crown, as if you're inhaling up a tube. And when you exhale, you can splash your exhale all around you, creating a sphere, a circle, like an etheric tube. And then you inhale it back through the perineum, up towards the crown. And then when you're ready to exhale, like a fountain, you explode from the crown of the head all around you, surrounding you with your breath, with your sphere, with your aura, with the beautiful, pure vibration that you are gathering, that you are harnessing for yourself. So every inhale, you can sip the inhale up your spine from your bottom part up to your top, top, top. And every exhale, you can surround yourself with your exhale, creating your circumference. Every time you inhale, you can inhale from your most primal parts, 
food, sex, money, water, subconscious, kidneys, adrenals, digestion, elimination, up towards the crown, divination, insights, vision, creativity. And then when you exhale, you let go of all of that and you just allow yourself to receive the grace of the exhale surrounding you, creating your circumference. One of the goal of the Katona practice is to teach us to become a sphere. In the Taoist tradition with the Chinese, the sphere is really like a purpose for us to become because it is the most perfect shape. So instead of basing ourselves on uh, certain beliefs or gods or goddesses or stories, we base ourselves on shapes which are archetypal, which transcend culture, transcend time, transcend space. It is really the fabric of the universe to be created with all of these geometrical shapes and all of these numbers. So the sphere is really the most perfect of the shapes. So take a moment here to find the sphericality of your experience, playing with your center, exploring your circumference, and then getting intimate with all of the space in between. So good. Then whenever you're ready, you can bring your hands underneath your uh, shoulders. You can lift yourself halfway. Nice. You can give yourself a nice twist here. So you can extend your right arm towards the left. Take your right shoulder down on the floor. Nice. Bend your right elbow. Make a fist with the right hand, right? And then make a mitt with the left hand. So the left hand would come on top of the, of the right, as if the right is a ball and the left is a mitt. And then let your elbows be right on top of one another. And then lift your vision up towards the ceiling and start to revolve yourself. Keep your pelvis on the same line. So the right hip, left hip are still on the same line. Your kidneys are level horizontally and your lungs are level vertically. So start to pull yourself for, uh, towards the left side so that you can open yourself in a big twist here. Use the connection of your hands, use your elbows on the floor, nice, to start to twist you, to let your left lung be right on top of the right. And then see how much of the ceiling can you see right on top of you. Inhale, bring yourself to the middle, beautiful. Lift yourself up and let's take it for the other side. Um, Anna's father, I don't know your name, but you're great. Your, your form is great. <laughs> so nice, beautiful. Yes. <laughs> Tell me your name after when we finish this. Extend your left arm by your, by your side towards the right. And then uh, bend your left elbow. If you have a block, you can place your head on the block behind you here. And then make, uh, imagine yourself playing rock, paper, scissors and make a rock with your left hand. So a fist and make a paper with the right hand. So, uh, so right on top of it, right? And then use this connection to start to twist you. Maybe lift your vision up even more. Maybe your head will lift off of the block if you have a block. And then keep leveling your uh, hips on the same line. Right kidney, left kidney, same line. And then put your lungs right on top of one another. Lift your vision up towards your right elbow. Give yourself this nice twist here. And then inhale, bring yourself back. And inhale, exhale naturally. Lift yourself back up towards the middle, towards the center. So good, beautiful, nice. Tuck your toes underneath you. Take this, uh, support, uh, whatever you had behind you, take it out. And now just bring your, big, uh, bring your toes underneath you. So have your toes tucked and then go ahead and sit on top of your heels just for a few seconds here. If this is too much, you can put your hands on a block, on blocks by your side. Feels really nice to just give your ankles this other experience. If this is okay, you can lift your knees up and take your hands behind you so that your knees are a little bit lifted. You can lift your chest up. And of course, if it's too much, you take one step back and you keep your hands either by your sides or on your thighs. Nice, beautiful. And then bring yourself back, 
to the center, tuck your to uh, untuck your toes. So now the tops of the, the tops of the feet are down, and then go ahead and sit on top of your heels. Same thing. If this is too much, you stay here. You breathe. If this is okay, take your hands behind you, lift your knees up, and start to make circles with your knees in one direction, opening up the uh, the ankles, the necks of your legs, the necks of your feet, and then going the other way, the other direction. Nice. Then bring yourself to the center. See if you can lift your arms over your head. Maybe grab hold of your opposite elbows. Take a moment to put your face right in the middle of this frame. Find your center and all of this uh, commotion that might be happening right now with all of this posture. Where is the center? Where is the circumference? Remember, it is yours. You can use this in any situation in your life. This is why we practice. And then exhale. Separate your hands. Beautiful. And let's find a seat. So um, especially during Zoom, sometimes I do Shavasana. Which I love Shavasana, the final resting posture. But because we're together and, you know, like you can do Shavasana after. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like after, after practice, you can just lie on your back and take five, 10 minutes for yourself. But uh, for now, let's close with a nice... Uh, with a nice uh, seat, right? With some breath work and just to organize ourselves uh, before we go and finish our days. So, or start our days. So go ahead and find the seat just like you sat in the beginning or maybe try something new. So you can sit on top of something. You can sit on top of two blankets, for example, like this, right? Uh, with your legs crossed. You can take a block, squeeze it between your ankles and go ahead and sit in hero's pose in virasana or you can sit on your uh, on your heels just like we did before right so find the seat that is formal but formidable at the same time so that you can enjoy it so that it doesn't feel like a punishment Yoga is not at all designed to be like this, although it is taught in some traditions. I was taught like this actually in the beginning, that it's very serious and austere and you shouldn't do this and this is wrong. And there's only one way the guru said this, right? Or the book said this. And it's like, okay, I mean, I love what it's giving me. I love what it's giving me as a gift, but I don't like that narrative. So anyway you do whatever works for you and um that's and i do whatever works for me and that's how it it works right i don't know if this made sense but it makes sense inside so bring yourself to a nice seat nice put yourself right in the middle reconnect yourself with this uh, beauty of you being in the middle of two polarities right the first polarity is the earth underneath you the planet, the animal nature, the plant nature, which you're part of, and the stars, the sky, the cosmos, all of this very, very evolved intelligence out there that you're also part of, and it's actually inside of you as well, underneath your skin, right? That's how the organs are organized, or else nothing would function. It's very complicated to create a system that holds together for millions of years if it's not uh, an equation right? If it's not a system, it breaks, right? So there's something very, uh, very technical, right? In the magic that, oh, we are human, right? It is very, very, very technical. Magic is technical, as Naveen, my favorite and most influential teacher says, right? It's like, she always says, when you go to a magician, right? And you tell them to, um, uh, to teach you their, their tricks, they will give you, they will open their books and there are all of these equations, all of these tricks. It's not just by luck that the rabbit goes out of the, uh, the hat. It cannot, maybe it would happen once, but you have to be systematic. So there's something very technical in the mystical path, right? We have a tendency to think, oh, it's just for crazy people. It's just for like new age people who are just so ungrounded. And it's like, oh, spirituality. Some people like puke when they think of that. And it's actually very technical. You know what I mean? Like it's very scientific, it's very technical. So there, there's, something, there's something to that, right? And I always put myself in the middle. I try not to take 
sides, even though I grew up having to pick, right? This or that, right? Are you this or that? Are you from th these people, that, that people? Pick between your father and your mother. Who do you like the most? Who do you want to live with, right? There's always this duality, this thing. And I was like, oh my God, I can be both, you know? Like I can pick both. I can put myself in the middle. It's just so freeing to be that way. Anyway, put yourself in the middle and then lift your arms up towards the sky. Extend your arms towards the sides. And this time, look at your right hand. Actually, bring your left hand to your heart. Remember, the left hand is the extension of the heart, right? So you can really rest it on top of your heart here. And then start to shake your right hand. You can look at your right hand and start to flip it. Start to shake it. Nice, nice, nice. Imagine your right hand being the hand of the world. It is the hand that shakes other people's hands. It is the hands that makes the deals. It is the hands that signs the check. It is the hand that slaps someone's face, right? It is really the hand that do stuff, that does stuff, right? That make things happen and all that. So give it a nice shake, right? Give it a nice little uh, break here. Yes, you can shake it in other ways, in way ways that are weird. So you can give your joint all sorts of experiences so, so that it doesn't break when it goes in a uh, direction that it doesn't go all the time. And then bring this hand to your heart and extend your left arm towards the sides. You can start to shake your left hand. Imagine it being an extension of your heart, an extension of your feelings. This is the hand that you get married with if you are uh, interested in getting married in, the, in these times. And then you start to move your wrist in all directions. Very good. It is really all about feeling, all about uh, emotions, right? It is very innocent. It is very emotional, right? So give it a nice shake because we do have a tendency to think a lot and to feel a lot, actually. I feel this. I feel she doesn't like me. I feel he said this about me. All of these stuff. So give them a nice little shake. Beautiful. And now bring your left hand to the heart where it belongs. Send your right arm to the world where it belongs. And then start to switch. Right hand, heart, left hand out. Left hand, heart. And then keep switching here. Every time your hand comes to the middle, you can make contact between your fingertips and your sternum in the center of your chest or anywhere on your chest. If you don't like the feeling of touching your uh, chest here every time you're moving your hand, you can have your hand right in front of your chest without making contact. Very good. Now start to find your rhythm and bring your breath into the equation. So it's in, out. <sighs> Find a nice rhythm, in, out, in, out, in, out. Put yourself right in the middle. Put all of the world on your right side, your education, your obligations, your work, everything that's outside of you, the news, the politicians, the people on the right side, out, out, out. If you're very comfortable with in, out, in, out, you can only focus on your exhale and do the kapalabhati like we did in the beginning of the practice. So it's really out, out, out. Or in, out, in, out. So you have all of these options. And if none of this is resonating, just inhale and exhale normally, but really play with your arms here. Every time you play with your arms, you're playing with your second floor, with your chest, with your lungs, with your liver, with your heart. So now continue moving yourself in your breath, in your tapping. And start to imagine that all of your personal stuff is on the left side. All of your secrets, your feelings, your little guilty pleasures on the left side. And you're putting yourself right in the middle between the world on the right, the others looking at you, how you present yourself, and your feelings on the left, how you are when you put your head on the pillow at night, right? The real you. And then put yourself in the middle so that you can start to mediate and start to be a version that can function in both so that you don't have to put a mask every time you go in the world unless it's COVID time and you do have to put a mask. But you don't have to put the other mask, the one that smiles a lot, that is all about like, yeah, oh, this is great. Oh my God. 
bad and all of these stuff, right? You can take all of these masks out and still be a good person and still be a nice person. So put yourself in the middle here. Start to mediate between the world and the self. Maybe take yourself a little bit faster so that it's a little bit out of your comfort zone. So beautiful. Nice, nice, nice. Start to tap the center of your chest, which is your immunity, your thymus gland. And now open your mouth and make a sound. Ah, it's so good. Exhale, take your hands down. When you're empty, inhale, lift both arms up towards the sky. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Hook your thumbs over your head. Squeeze your perineum. Close the gate. Lift the lock up. Take three sips of air. Fill your upper lungs a little bit more. Tuck your chin towards your chest. Put yourself under pressure. Little presto. Maybe inhale more. Maybe swallow. What do you tell yourself to soothe yourself? Maybe you inhale a tiny little more. A little, little more. A last little more. And then whenever you're ready, through the crown of your head, let the genie out of the bottle. Exhale, hands down, thumbs up, eyes closed. Receive. Every time you inhale, you can tell to yourself, I am grateful for. And every time you exhale, you can fill in the blank. Very simple. You can inhale, I am grateful for. And exhale, my eyes. I am grateful for. And you exhale, my parents. I'm in, I'm grateful for, exhale, my pets. Every exhale, fill in the blank, even if it's the most banal, mundane thing. Every inhale, I'm grateful for, every exhale, put something. Just nine more breaths. Three more breaths. Very nice. Notice how you feel. Notice how much there is. and how graceful we can become when we are grateful. And then whenever you're ready, you can bring your palms together in the center of your chest. Let your thumbs make contact with your sternum and push your sternum forward on your thumbs so that your shoulders can go back where they belong in the past, in the memories, in the reflection of the experience behind you. And your lungs can come forward in front of you where they belong, pointing you towards your potential, your future, your destination, your vision. And then put yourself right in the middle between memories and potential 
exactly where you belong in the present moment, right here and right now. Take a moment to remember your vision, your desire, your intention. Imagine it's right at the tip of your thumbs. And then lift your thumbs to your lips, make contact, maybe give yourself a little kiss. And then lift your thumbs on your foreheads and slowly bow your head down towards your center and down towards your planets. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you.